Good morning. Good morning, Antioch, the gathering, and Landon Church in the Y. This is a great thing, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's great to hear you singing. Uh, just fr coming from a uh, coming from the gathering, it's it is evident that uh, your joy has increased. We just sang about that. What other song uh, has the word preeminent in it, huh? When was the last time you used that word in a worship song? It's beautiful. Anyone know what it means? First things. That he would be our first love. That he would be our first treasure. That we would put him before all things. That he would be preeminent. Pre, before. So what a great, uh, what a great thing to say to the Lord and sing and just declare as uh, three churches coming together this morning. Uh, if you are visiting or if you're new to these three churches, my name is Mike Newman. Uh, I am the brother of David Newman. And if you just want to know what it's like to be a brother of David, we'll have a Q&A after the service. It'll be a very long one, very long Q&A. So just budget that in your time and go for it. I love Baptism Sunday. Uh, it's like the only Sunday that us preacher dudes get to preach in board shorts and Birkenstocks. And so it's just, it's just great, it's everything about it. Um, hey, for the past few years, we've got to come together and to talk about the meaning of baptism, uh, ask questions like, what is baptism? What's the purpose of it? And uh, this morning, I just would like to ask a question and, uh, and, then, and then seek to answer it in the next 15, 20 minutes together as we sit under the word. Uh, so the question this morning is, uh, what are the effects of baptism? Meaning, um, what are the effects as a result of coming here this morning and witnessing baptisms? Like when you leave from here after a beautiful barbecue lunch, like pulled pork and all the fixings, ready? And you get in your car and uh, you look at your spouse and you go, hey, how, how was that for you? Like, what did you learn? Um, what were the effects of this morning on your life? Uh, what was the lasting outcome or the results from being together with God's people and uh, seeing the gospel displayed through baptism. So that's the question, right? And um, when, when I say effects, I don't mean like this emotional term. Or, um, you know, us guys, sometimes we struggle with, with our verbiage. You know, when we leave from church, oftentimes we like beat our chest and we're like, mm, it really got me, right? Um, but like what I mean is like how did it impact you? Um, how were you spiritually built up? The word, the singing, the baptisms, the fellowship of believers, um, what sort of way did it affect your heart to cause God to be preeminent in your life? Amen? So that's where we're headed. Just one question. Um, I'll have two answers for it, and I hope to, like, address three audiences, Okay. The first is um, the people that are being baptized. So today we're going we're gonna to dunk 18 people, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be so great, and uh, it's, yeah, there's just nothing better than it. Um, we're also just going to address the church, okay? So for those of you who are among us who have placed your faith and trust in Jesus, uh, you're not perfect, but progressively, you have over a lifetime, and we're just going to keep on using that word because it's so good. You've said, Lord, you've been preeminent in my life. I'm going to put you before all things. And then we're going to talk to those among us who have never placed their faith and trust in Jesus. And you maybe have, have heard a lot of like Christianese over your lifetime. You've heard words like baptism. Uh, you've heard words like saved or born again. But frankly, you're here and you're like, that's all really weird to me. But um, I'm looking around, and I see a lot of people that um, are just different, and, uh, and, it, and it seems like they've been changed by something. And we just want to say you're welcome here, 
we're excited for you to both hear and see the gospel at work. So let's get after it, shall we? All right. So here's the first answer to the question, what are the effects of being here on Baptism Sunday? First answer, confidence. Confidence. So the Bible, Philippians 1.6 says, and I am confident of this. Finish it with me if you know it. That he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Such a great verse, okay? Great summary of the Christian life. He who began a good work in you, meaning, hey, when you came to know the Lord, when you became a Christian, that was the beginnings of a new life in Christ. He who began a good work in you, he will also carry it on to completion. What does that mean? That means that he who began a work in you gives you the Holy Spirit, doesn't leave you alone, and he's going to help you, he's going to walk with you, and he's going to be there right alongside you to help you grow and to help you live for Jesus your whole life. It's a beautiful promise that the Christian has, that you're not alone, right? So he'll continue to work on you. And then the verse goes, until the day of Christ Jesus, which means until Jesus comes back, or until you die, okay? That's basically it, Newman translation. So, so he who is saved is promised that God won't leave you and he will continue to work on you until he comes back. And right now we're in this between stage. We're waiting and we're longing and we're walking with him. And so that should give you, the person who's being baptized, great confidence. So today, the 18 of you, today you get to declare in word and deed that God began a great work in you. And so this should give you great confidence. So, hey, the 18 of you, listen up. Uh, the Christian life, and you can look around, and many of believers uh, among us can uh, testify to this. The Christian life ain't always easy. It's not. But today, as you declare your faith in Jesus, that you're going and you're, and you're saying, that was my old life, and I'm leaving it in the waters, and I'm living a new life now. This new life, you can look back on today, and it will provide you great, uh, great confidence. Some say assurance in your faith, in your walk with Jesus Christ. Um, I was talking on the phone this week with a friend from Texas, and she reminded me of a, a great story, um, a great marriage story for Hannah and I. Um, and so Hannah and I were talking about this, just laughing. We were just laughing, weren't we, baby? She was like, oh, no, you really are going to tell it. I was like, yes, yes, I am. So, like, um, how many of you are married here? Just go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah. Is your marriage a lot like ours? Like uh, in terms of the canvas of, of uh, painting, when you're painting your marriage, it's like all bright, beautiful pastel colors. There's no black, dark spots or splotches, nothing like that. You too? Is, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, no, no, no. So I remember uh, we were driving to a marriage conference. It's like 30 minutes away. And everyone knows if you're married, there's like two places you don't get like in arguments at. One is on the way to church, right? And many of you have seen like that church parking lot miracle where you're like arguing and then you like close the door and then you're like get out. God bless you. You know, how are you, right? So you don't get, go, don't get in fights on the way to church. And then don't, there's some folks I'm seeing, they're like, I'm sorry, baby, for getting the fight this morning. <laughs> right. Then not the other one is don't get in arguments on the way to um, marriage conferences, right? Because those are supposed to be like awesome and like really good experiences. So we were driving on the way to this marriage conference. And me as the husband, I was like trying to be sensitive and stuff, you know. So I was, I was asking her all these questions about her life and her heart and her emotions, right? I was connecting with my wife. And then we're pulling up in the parking lot. And I go, well, baby, anything else that we need to talk about before we, we get into this marriage conference to just really build and strengthen our marriage? She goes, well, there, there is one thing. I was like, 
Okay, yeah, what is it? I crashed the car today. It was like, oh, so that's awesome timing, right? So how am I supposed to respond to that? It's like just about to go in to like build our marriage, and it's like, oh, right? And uh, we went into that conference, and it was beautiful to be able to sit under God's word, to be reminded of, of our vows to each other, to rem- be reminded of that day when we promised before God to each other and to everyone witnessing that we were going to love each other till death do us part. Car crash or no crash. Like we were, we were in it. And for those of you being baptized today, I kind of like that. That you are making a covenant with the Lord and to your church. That you're going to walk with him. And we're going to be with you. And it's not always going to be easy. There's going to be up and downs. But the moral of the story is not wait till like a marriage conference or t- church to like tell your spouse hard things. <laughs> moral of the story is, hey, you're going to have great confidence as a result of today. That's one of the effects in your life. Hey, for those of you who are witnessing, though, this, this baptism, so everyone else, this picture that you're going to get of baptism will also provide you with great confidence. What do I mean? That when you're watching what's going on, it will give you great confidence that God is still at work, that he's still at work changing lives and making all things new. And I think for these three churches and this whole country, this whole world, we especially need this reminder. Like the last 18, 24 months has been a massive challenge, hasn't it? Like COVID, yes, of course, we're all on the same page with that. How about Afghanistan and the mess and the carnage and the wreckage that's happening over there? Just this last week, in the backyard of of the Mainville uh, YMCA, the Turning Leaf Subdivision. Many of you heard this, but a four-year-old, sweet little girl, wandered out of her house. She went to go feed the fish. She slipped on a rock, and she drowned in the local neighborhood pound. And that whole community is suffering and grieving. There's, there is hard things going on in this life, and we need a picture of hope. Like, we need a symbol, a way to declare that God is still at work. And so this was me this week. Man, what illustration, like, what sort of picture could I, like, conjure up or come up with in order to encourage and strengthen the church of God? And it's like, on Baptism Sunday, you don't have to look too far, right? It's not much of a reach. Like, we get the ordained picture, like, the one that Jesus says, Hey, do this when someone comes to faith. We get to witness someone declaring their faith and them going down in the waters and saying, that's my old life. I don't want it anymore. I'm done with that and I need Jesus. And when they're raised to walk in the newness of life, there's this refreshing aspect of this picture. But even more specific, like to speak to you who are witnessing. This is not just about those 18. But for some of you who are witnessing the baptisms today, and you're seeing this old life gone, new life, like risen, perhaps the Holy Spirit will use that picture to convict you of sin in your life. Maybe you're like, man, I did that a long time ago, but with regards to experiencing confidence, I've lost it. Man, I've been living on my own flesh, my own desires, and I've lost hope that God still works. So let today be a great reminder that you can trust him that he's still working in people's lives and causing great change. Amen? And hey, for you who don't know the Lord, 
for you who, who've never placed your faith and trust in Jesus, uh, you've never repented of your sins, and, and you've never experienced the confidence of going to heaven and knowing Jesus. And, and, and everything that we've just said, you're like, I have no idea what he's talking about. Um, that's okay. That's okay. Today, we invite you to, to look around, to watch, and also to have confidence. To have confidence that amidst like a, a chaotic world, that there is a God who is still causing change. He's still working in people's lives, and you'll get to witness real change. It's not just a religious ceremony, something that we do with empty hearts, like just a bunch of shells walking around. You'll see in the lives of people, in their eyes, in their smiles, that this is for real. And if you see that, and if you want that, we want to offer an opportunity to give it to you through Jesus Christ. And after we're done here, I'll invite you to come to the tent right over here to pray and receive him. Cool? Hey, let's go to the second answer. So the first one, confidence. The second answer is joy. All right? What are the effects of coming today to, to this baptism and witnessing 18 folks getting baptized? Joy. All right, so let's talk to those 18 first, okay? Um, I'm not talking about like just some giddiness, not some like external happiness, this, this fakeness that you see in the world. Uh, I'm not talking about like just like some jazz hands Christianity, but sincere, deep, abiding, heartfelt, Christ-centered, from the core, joy. And today, uh, for those of you getting baptized, this is going to be a joyful celebration for you. You'll be able to look back, and a lot of fond, joyful memories will be here. It'll bring about great joy in your life because it's a celebration of what God has done through Jesus Christ. And that's not just in theory. That's not just conceptual. That's not just like 10,000 feet in the air, but it's real, and it's happened in the life of 18 real people with real names, real faces, real experiences. And so, hey, you guys who are getting baptized, you should take great joy in the fact that today God is smiling down upon you. He loves what is happening today, and he gets great glory from it. Amen? But hey, it's just not about those 18. For those of you who are witnessing the baptisms, who have placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, who are Christians, this will be a great, joyful experience for you as well. For some of you, you're going, man, I've lost my joy. Man, I remember what it was like when I came to Christ. When I got baptized that one day, it was so joyful. And man, I've been so down. I would love to go back to that state of being joyful. Anyone like that? Because I've been there too. Hey, I've got good news for you today. If you're here and you want that, your joy can be restored. So all over the scripture, but I'm just going to pick one. Psalm 51, David says, restore, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. It's a beautiful verse. Like that gives us so much hope that we can come to God when we're not joyful, when we're not experienced like the abundant, joyful, spirit-filled life, and we go, Lord, I feel all messed up. Would you restore unto me the joy that you once brought? Would you do that? I've forgotten what it's like to have close fellowship. I've forgotten what it's like to seek him with all my heart. I forgot what it's like to have him as preeminent to be the highest treasure in my life. So the pathway to that restoration oftentimes is confession of sin. And so when you are witnessing these baptisms and we have these people saying, I'm done with my sin, who are here and you're not a Christian, and we're so excited you're here, and you're, here, you're like, Joy, what? All these people, like, 
raising their hands and singing. Hey, I don't know these words, and, and what in the world is going on? But they're joyful, and I think I want that. As you witness the gospel and the baptisms happening today, you've got to know this. Hey, you don't have to get your life all together before coming to Jesus. We like to say, um, hey, you don't have to wash off before you get in the bathtub. You just get in the bathtub. That's how you become a Christian. You say, I, I can't like wash off my own sins. I can't do it in and of my own. I have to come to Jesus. And how you come to him is you repent of your sins and you trust him to forgive your sins. And he will cleanse you from all the yucky stuff. The Bible says all the unrighteousness. And then he comes in. John 1.12, for as many as received him, to those he gave the right to become children of God. Today, we're witnessing 18 people that have received him. And we also want to invite you, if you've never received Jesus, today could be your day. You don't have to wash off. And this is a beautiful promise that you will have if you believe joy. Amen? All right. So, hey, just in conclusion, when you're getting in the car and you're driving off with your family, with your friend, with your spouse, whatever, and you can ask them, hey, how did today's service affect you? How did this baptism service affect play a role? What was the outcome or results in your heart, in your life? I hope that you'll be able to converse and talk about how the Lord transformed your mind and your heart today in two areas, confidence and joy. Can I pray for us? So Father, would you do that? We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he's still at work. And that he is our joy. We thank you for your spirit who contends for us and is at work in and through us. And we ask that you um, in the next moments would move mightily among us. You've promised so in your word. You've promised so when people come together. And you've promised so when we're obedient unto the things that you've commanded. Namely today, baptism. And so we, uh, we, we look to you now. We just pause and listen to you and what you're doing. so trustworthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So hey, while I'm talking, um, if the elders of the churches, um, ministry leaders, uh, prayer team, if you just come up and um, even if you're, you're s seated, uh, just take a glance at the folks who are coming up and headed to the table, uh, to, forgive me, to the tent. Um, that if you uh, need prayer in any way, your life like doesn't have to be uh, falling apart, but um, if you need prayer in any way, just we would invite you to come to the tent. Uh, in addition, if you have never received Christ, it would be our great joy and their delight to walk you through how to receive Jesus. It's not some like magic prayer or some pixie dust time. They're just, they're just here to help you, okay? And so if, you, if you've never become a Christian, uh, we would love to be able to witness today that crossover from death to life. And then thirdly, um, if you are still on the fence of uh, being baptized, so that would be like you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus. You know that the Holy Spirit has, has brought about fruit in your life and you've never, um, you've never like maybe seen it in the scriptures, you've never been told um, what it is, what it means. 
you just you're just new at this and oh I would love to respond to Jesus. I love him, of course, right? Uh, we would also invite you to come forward and just talk to those folks in the tent. And they'd love to um, help you navigate those waters. Uh, pun intended, haha. Okay? That's the plan. <laughs>